vlog, I think number 30. Uh, interesting, yeah. So, uh, hello everybody, vlog number 30. Uh, checking in from Hangzhou, did a lot of good stuff already, productive stuff, spoke at a conference, did opening keynote, and met a lot of great people. I'm gonna show you that in the vlog for sure, I guess probably now. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for uh, organizing this amazing conference. Uh, I work for a company called Startup Grind, and uh, we have a dream to uh, inspire, educate, and connect entrepreneurs from all around the world because we believe that like that, we can actually create a sustainable change. We can build companies, we can build social enterprises, and many other things. So I wanna, I wanna talk about that dream, but from my perspective, it's more about taking action. Even small step, towards the dream to actually accomplish it. So I want to also give some suggestions today how we can actually get there, how we can build that collaborative innovation ecosystem maybe here in Hangzhou and we can lead by example in other cities in China and around the world. I believe that taking action is actually sometimes even more important than dreaming itself. And so I want to propose a solution. But before I do that, I just want you to remember one thing that innovation culture is built from the bottom up. We really need to start with the grassroots communities. Uh, we cannot just uh, pour a lot of money into an ecosystem. If we build an innovation park, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can solve this problem, right? I don't think that it's about lack of people, it's lack of talent, it's lack of uh, capital ideas. We have them everywhere, right? There, there are so many smart people here in this room and in Hangzhou and also in Czech Republic where I come from, but the problem is that we need to really mix these people together in the right way. And we can actually you know, support it. Government can support it. I can support it from my position, from being a startup brand director in Asia. I can you know, try to facilitate different connections. And, and so this is what we should be focusing on. What is a keystone? What is a connector, right? So it's a person or it's an institution that is basically making those connections or bridging those barriers, right? And so here are a couple of points again that are very important to you know, being a keystone. So they're always out there, they're always actively connecting people, bridging the barriers, you know, and uh, you know, they, they really make sure that the, the connections they make, they're high quality, that people that they connect, they can actually do something together, not just for, for the sake of connecting, but they can actually execute stuff together. They can build those companies, they can build products, and they can build sustainable enterprises. And uh, they also have the ability to inspire people and to make things happen, right? They're very resource resourceful. And so, so these are the people that we should nurture in the ecosystem, I believe. And so we have innovation parks. Especially in China, you, you see that uh, you know, governments are spending a lot of money on building innovation parks. We have talent. I believe that in Hangzhou or in this province, there is uh, you know, one of the best universities in, in the whole China, right? So, so we have the talent. We have a lot of capital, right? I read that China is trying to invest or is investing 300 billion US dollars into innovation, into entrepreneurship. So we have capital and we definitely have a lot of ideas because you know, ideas are everywhere. Uh, I guess you in the room have a lot of ideas yourself, like maybe tens. So it's not a problem, but we need to have those keystones, those people that will actually uh, you know, break the barriers and make things happen and connect the capital, connect the talent, and we'll see the, you know, the potential in somebody and connect them with the, right with the right person to make things happen. So this is what we need to do, and I think this is kind of even our responsibility uh, from the community perspective. You know, it takes time to build. I gave you some examples, Boulder, Silicon Valley, Slush, it took years, maybe tens of, uh, tens of years, you know, to really build those ecosystems. So we need to get started. We need to do it right. We need to start today. But actually, it doesn't require too much because I told you that the first step maybe is to just support those keystones, to make those connections. And so, as I said, I would love to invite you to join me. 
and 300 cities globally where we have those people, where we have those passionate people. We have them in Hangzhou too. And we are expanding, we are looking for people, we are looking for passionate people. So if you want to join us, if you want to join this mission, please reach out to me anytime. Uh, here is my information, WeChat, Weixin, my email. So if you need anything, if I can help you somehow, please do reach out and uh, enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Now doing, or on the way, I'm in Didi right now, uh, on the way to a TV studio to do an interview there about entrepreneurship. There is going to be, I think, one young entrepreneur from Hangzhou. So uh, that's happening now. And then afterwards, meeting some more people, friends that are doing business in China, in Hangzhou. Then jumping on a train, going to, um, uh, going to Shanghai. Again, couple of events today, meeting friends, meeting people, uh, working a little bit, catching up with the stuff that I didn't do because of the conference yesterday. And, uh, and yeah, enjoying Shanghai, so we'll see. I will definitely keep you posted. I will try to document everything. Ask him about uh, the spirit of an entrepreneurship. He said that it's changing, that uh, changing yourself and changing the world, yes. and never satisfied about what yes. you have now, yes. but looking forward to the yes. future. Do you think it's the core spirit of an entrepreneurship? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, basically, being an entrepreneur, it's uh, you know, it sounds great, right? Like when you look at him, his story, it's it's amazing, inspiring, but it's hard at the same time, right? Because he's going through a lot of difficulties. Yeah. A lot of when obstacles. you go to practice, you will find a lot of difficulties. You in exactly. Country. And I think you know that's the discussion we should have, right? Like not. Yeah, we should inspire people, but we should tell them as well that it's hard. We need to prepare for that. Yes, we can make it easier for some people, you know, to make the decision. If we create an ecosystem, we make it easier to access some information, to learn from others, to have access to mentors, you know, that can teach them uh, to o overcome some certain difficulties or obstacles. But at the same time, you know, we should help them to discover if it's actually for them. Okay, so the second question will be if you encounter some difficulties after one year of starting your business. So what will you do when you cease your business and stop what you are doing? Or what do you find some uh, new ways of working out it and then continue your way? Yeah. Of course, there, are, there, is, there is many ways to, to look at it. And I think it's about you know, having the dream and having the passion for what you do. And at the same time, being very practical about it, right? Because you need to know your situation, right? <laughs> Finished the meeting with a friend that is helping entrepreneurs in China, foreign entrepreneurs in China, good stuff. And now jumping on the high speed train and going to Shanghai. So tell me, these guys, uh, some, some people watch it. Yeah. If not millions of people yeah. yet. It will be. <laughs> So what do you what do you guys do? Explain so, in one sentence or two sentences. Yeah, the whole prize is the biggest student uh, entrepreneur platform in the world to connect uh, students to businesses and capital and mentors to build four good for profit businesses. These guys are legit, yeah. like really legit. So yeah, so this year we reached two hundred thousand students. Crazy. We're building fifty thousand different businesses. And they have a and team we, over there. Yeah, the team. You know, they don't want to be on the video, but they are right now. <laughs> and we haven't worked out how to build the ecosystem yet. And that's why we need people like Startup Grind to build that ecosystem. Of course, I'm here. Startups. Everything you need. We solved it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yo, so we are going Yo. live. Yeah, we are going live. So What's gonna happen? Well, great things are gonna happen. Like, so great things. We have, a, we have a studio here. And we're going live in like uh, 15 minutes, right?
get ready for the fact that you need to be patient with, with many things and it takes much longer for you to build relationships, to show people that you actually are here for the long haul, not just you know for a couple of months and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, if you have that mindset, then you can actually build really, really nice uh, relationships. You can meet a lot of good friends that are very internationally minded and who knows, maybe you're gonna find a Chinese co-founder with whom you're gonna build next Chunar, what happened to Fritz Demopoulos who came to China, found a local co-founder, local team, built a company that was sold to Baidu for 300 million US dollars. So maybe it's gonna happen to you too. So no. be open-minded. Open-minded, patient and try to learn, yeah? Of course, yeah, You're it's always the same, man. <laughs> no matter where you go, China, Israel, US, you need to be open-minded and work hard. Thank you so much, Yan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So it's a wrap. Uh, I'm at the airport right now in Shanghai, going to Shenzhen, going back to Shenzhen. And uh, just to summarize, amazing weekend in Hangzhou and Shanghai. Met a lot of great people, learned a couple of new things and pushed our projects forward for sure. Uh, visited a couple of events. I guess you will get the snapshot from all of them or you already got a snapshot from all of them. And um, one story, I was actually going to the airport, but I took a train in the opposite direction. And uh, one of the passengers, because I was running around, I was checking if I'm going right or not. Uh, one of the passengers actually told me that I am going in the wrong direction. And so uh, karma worked out very well this time. And so just the moral, the moral of the story is that uh, keep spreading positive vibes because you never know when you might need them so uh yeah keep on keep on rocking it keep on hustling and uh, i will be back soon